My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to look into the claim made by paleontologist Clifford Miles on the Nazca alien mummies being a new genus and species. But is this fact or is this just fiction? Recently, I came across a tweet by Tyler Greenfield who mentioned on Twitter, I'm not calling it X, just refusing, on Twitter, uh, who mentioned that paleontologist Clifford Miles named the Nazca alien mummies as a new genus and a new species. He also kindly shared the link to Clifford's self-published paper. So I did my due diligence and I went to the website where one can access the self-published paper by Clifford Miles. And the website is simply called themilespaper.com. The paper is sectioned into two parts. And to be completely honest, at first glance, and I'm not a professional, it looked nothing like a scientific paper. The paper is dated October, 2022, no actual day is given in the date and apparently it's already about a year old. I also want to say that I'm going to look into part one of the paper mostly because part two is just the evidence of aliens and it's very not good. Clifford Miles is a retired paleontologist who used to work at the Western Paleontological Labs. So let's take a look at the contents of the paper. It starts with an introduction where Clifford Miles talks about two forces at play in regards to extraterrestrial truth. On one side, there's the group of people who control the alien narrative, who he claims keep the truth from ever seeing light of day in the interest of national security. Why it's not international security, I mean, I honestly don't know, but it's just like in the movies, only America is, you know, the victim of alien invasions for some reason. He then mentioned the other group are the people in the know who are making efforts to get the information and proof out in the open. He apparently chose to stay quiet in regards to making this paper public that no one had the slightest idea that he was going to make it public. He says that he can prove scientifically that aliens are real and that he can also prove what the hardworking UFO researchers have been trying to tell us for decades is real. I mean, I've seen some of his evidence and it's just old YouTube videos that we all know are fake. Sorry. He assembled what he considered to be the strongest material for worldwide disclosure and he wrote this paper. Already, this introduction is a hoot. Now let's get into the paper written by Clifford Miles. In the abstract, he explains that a new family, genus and species is being described that this new species has a single lower arm bone, which is something that no known ancestor in our fossil record have, and that according to him, no animals on earth living or extinct have. None of them have a single lower arm bone. So according to him, this feature makes a strong case that these mummies did not evolve on earth. He says that this is an upright bipedal species with both reptile and mammalian features in their skeletons, that the body plan of these mummies is similar to humans. Although he says in an example of their terrestrial nature that there are differences, like these mummies don't have an opposable thumb. They can't give you the thumbs up, which is a shame. He also claims that they look like typical grey alien species that have been reported over the decades. Although, you know, there's never been any actual scientific proof of these grey aliens. So how do we know what they look like? Well, from YouTube videos and all of that, of course. Duh. He then explains that the description of this new family, genus and species is based on eight individuals that were discovered in Peru in 2016, of which five individuals are complete, one individual is only missing its head, and there are two individuals who we only have the head from. It was the particular individual without a head that was used for DNA studies along with one of the two loose skulls. Apparently, during the research, it was apparent that neither a loose skull belonged to the headless individual. I'm so sorry, we couldn't find your head. He then goes on to explain that we have a humanoid being with the mammal-like feature of a clavicle, better known as the collarbone. 
that looked very much like our own. He says that the basic body plan of this new species is like ours, with a head, shoulders, trunk, arms and legs, and that you can see that it was bipedal and walked upright. He says that these beings have a large elongated skull, large forward-facing eyes, no teeth, horizontal ribs that start at dorsal 7, a single lower arm bone, a single lower leg bone, one bone in each wrist, no ankle bones, and that the pelvic girdle is absent, but instead they have a cloaca-like opening for the deposition of eggs, and that they have reptile-like skin and fingernails. Miles then says that the fact that they are here with flesh and bones preserved implies that their ancestors should be in the fossil record, and the fact that they are not implies that they did not originate on Earth. According to him, he claims that he has never seen the possibility of a remote ancestor of these alien mummies in the fossil record. He claims to have discussed it with colleagues and that they agreed with him. Although he doesn't say which colleagues, so we don't know the validity of this claim. But his co-author, Kenneth Carpenter, who worked with him on a different paleontological paper in the past, not on this one, but in the past, wrote a scathing peer review of this Nazca alien mummy paper where he disregards the claims made by Miles. So, I have decided not to go into detail when it comes to the Miles paper. This is because, honestly, the paper is just ludicrous. Therefore, I have decided to mostly look into Kenneth Carpenter's peer review of the paper, which is linked in the description down below. Carpenter says that these bodies of the alien mummies are actually altered human and animal bones. Knowing the size of these mummies, probably infants and very young children. He states that it's not a question of whether he believes or not that there is life on other planets, as statistically there is a very high probability, but the evidence of visitation is not very good. Carpenter also manipulated the x-ray of a squirrel monkey, which he created by manipulating the x-rays, uh, to show how easily this can be done to make something look more alien. You can see the squirrel monkey right there. I mean, it looks alien! but it's just a squirrel merged with a monkey in an x-ray. He also states that this is not evidence that the images that Miles used were modified, but that it cannot be ruled out. He believes Miles to be an honorable person and that Miles took the images he got at face value. He definitely doesn't say that Miles manipulated x-rays or CT scans. But unless Miles can document an unbroken chain of custody from the original CETs to himself, there will always be a level of doubt on the validity of the images. The original CT disc should have all the metadata about when and where the CTs were made, which is why he asked Miles for this disc and he didn't receive it. Probably because Miles doesn't actually have the original disc. He explains that given how realistic dinosaurs in Jurassic Park movies look, he knows that believable computer graphic results of X-ray and CT images are possible, and that it's easy to manipulate pre-existing X-ray images as he has evidently shown with, you know, the squirrel monkey. He then goes on to talk about the DNA results showing both human and probably contaminated. Huh. And that the claims made by Yamin and Korotkov, who did the DNA analysis, on how the DNA is not human is cherry-picking from the various reports submitted to them by the labs. According to Carpenter, this is not an either-or situation. For example, if it's not human, it therefore must be alien, as Yamin and Korotkov assume. Microbial contamination of archaeological material has been known to be problematic in the past, he explains as is the possibility that the analysis was done on animal tissue, for example, a llama, because there have been talks that at least parts of the skulls of the mummies are probably a llama. Carpenter explains that tissue samples for DNA analysis should be extracted from the center of the bones to avoid the issue of contamination. However, there's no indication that this was done for the DNA analysis of the Miles paper. 
He then goes on to talk about how a life form that independently evolved on another planet, having the same chemical basis in DNA, let alone the DNA structure to be so similar to humans, is remarkable. He, of course, doesn't say it's impossible, but um, it's nearly impossible. Even more so in the light of the Soviet experiments back in the 1920s of human-chimp hybrids that failed. Chimpanzees share 99% of their DNA with us humans. And we are to believe that the aliens have evolved independently, have more than 99% similarities to us, which is statistically speaking highly unlikely, although not impossible, but let's be honest, it's nearly impossible. He also explains there is an issue with how the gender of the corpses was determined from the DNA. Given that the DNA was said to be alien and the DNA labs have no prior knowledge for the chromosomes for gender as they do for humans when it comes to these aliens. Of course, as I think almost all of you watching this will know, the chromosome for human females is XX and for the human male is XY whereas the Komodo monitor reptilian chromosomes for male is ZZ and for females it's ZW. The point that he makes here is that reptile chromosomes are very different from humans and that although the humans and the Komodo monitor evolved on the same planet, we cannot interbreed. So how likely would this be with alien reptiles? Not likely. Honestly, not likely at all. In the Miles paper, Miles mentions the alien mummies to have a cloaca for the deposition of eggs. Carpenter then looked at the x-rays of said eggs and explains that they are radio-opaque objects, blocking most x-rays, which implies that they are solid. I've never heard of a solid egg actually being an egg. There are no indications for the claimed alien eggs to be eggs without any analysis to show that they are. The evidence for the eggs, therefore, is unsubstantiated. And then there is the contradiction of one bone in the lower arm of the little corpses versus two bones in the lower arm in the adult individual they've dubbed Maria. And the vertebral column of Maria looks human. Maria is actually just a human skeleton except for the three-digit fingers and toes, whereas those of the little bodies look like human infants or young children cervicals. They probably used infant or young children bones to create these little bodies. Carpenter then goes to hypothesize where the bones may have come from. In his scientific opinion, I definitely wanted to note that. So there is a prehistoric Ikachincha Cemetery near Nazca, dating from 1450 CE to about 900 CE, with thousands of bones littering the surface, which would be a possible source for the human bones that were used in the creation of these alien mummies. Given that infant mortality is known to have been high in the ancient world, there would have been plenty to utilize. He of course says that this is not proof of the source of the human bones, but that the possibility cannot be ignored. The radiometric dates of the so-called aliens fall into the age of this particular Peruvian culture that lived in the area of Nazca. He continues his review in more detail as to how some of the bodies were found and the contradictions in those discovery stories, but I honestly feel like I have given you, my viewers, more than enough information to create your own opinion on these alien Nazca mummies. I will of course put the link to read his peer review of the Miles paper in my description down below in my sources section, as well as the Miles paper itself. So for those of you that want to read more, because the Miles paper itself is like 300 pages long and I do not want to feel like ripping out my hair for a second longer, but if you want to feel like that, please go read it. <laughs> Carpenter also doesn't question the analysis done by Miles, but he questions the data from which Miles based his interpretations. Given that the source Karotkov and Yamin have dubious histories prior to the discovery of these alien bodies, the evidence for the claims is tainted. 
So feel free to read up more about all this yourself. Go and read the Miles paper, seriously. If you want to feel like ripping your hair out, please do. I felt like that when I was reading it to write this script. So, what do you think about the Miles paper and the peer review of Carpenter? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or link in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. It truly means the world to me. And thank you for putting up with me filming with a white background for nearly a full year. Uh, I finally kind of finished my office. I mean, it's still sounding very hollow and echoey and I'm so sorry for the sound quality. It's not up to par, I understand. I'm sorry, working on it. Bookcase coming in next week and hopefully after that, this room will sound as it's more filled instead of this hollow room. It's not really a hollow room, but there's not enough around. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.